What a guest we've got today, another big name and a big strapping boy, <laughs> Lorenzo Amoruso, how are you doing mate? Not too bad, not too bad, thanks. Thanks very much for coming Thank on. you for the invitation. I must say mate, you're looking absolutely tremendous, eh? No, nah, well, keep, keep him well, getting old in a good way though. <laughs> uh, I had to shut the curtains, you were looking that good just in case something happens between us. <laughs> I need to ask you as well, the barnet, tremendous. Oh well, um... What do you put in that mousse? No, just a bit of uh, wax. All right, a bit of wax? Yeah, just a bit, yeah. It's like, you're like a movie star, eh? No, I'm not a movie star at all. Maybe I used to. The, uh, Someone in the past said that, that uh, I was doing a wrong job, but uh, I'm happy with what I've done. Tremendous. Right, on to the football. We're going to talk about your first love, Barry. Not Ferguson, the team. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that, fond memories coming through at Barry. Well, that is my hometown. Uh, it's love forever. And my family is still there. So getting in a professional football team where you're born is a dream come true, you know, it's something really special, something big because uh, people are expecting a lot from you, the supporters, you know, because you know what kind of feeling the people have in that kind of place of Italy or everywhere you are, then they really, they are demanding for you yeah. and with you. And so it's been absolutely wonderful. Besides, I had uh, Two good success down there because uh, for Bari at the time, uh, get promoted in Serie A and having few good rounds in Serie A, it was not something common there. So we've done very, very well. First thing I wanted to ask you, why did you play centre half? Because you were good with the ball at your feet. Centre midfielder, striker, I, no? When I was young, when I was young, I used to play midfielder, offensive midfielder. And when I actually signed for Bari, I, I went to Bari because I scored 19 goals that season. Uh, but then, uh, for a coincidence, basically, uh, when I signed for Bari, we went to play a tournament, a small tournament in precision in, uh, in the middle of Italy, a place called Viterbo. And uh, just before against, against an English team, Everton, we had, the, during the, the training session, the two central half got injured both. They just clapped, clashed together and they couldn't really play. Like stupid so, defenders. Yeah, that's it? right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the manager says to me, well, because I was good in the air with the high ball and things like that. I said, let's need to play on the back tomorrow. I said, what? I never played on the back. He says, well, you know, that's, that's no play players there. So we got another one and the next one, I think you can be there. And uh, we lost the game and I, th I thought that I had a nightmare. But he says to me, well, maybe you were not definitely the best player on the pitch today. But he says to me, I think uh, from now on, probably we we, we starting to considering to play you in that position because I think you can you can be a good player in that role. And in the beginning, I didn't really like the, the situation because I was too far away from scoring goals. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the problem. Uh, but eventually, you know, I started to understand how important it was to to defend and defend properly. You know, and uh, saying that basically. That that kind of move uh, just made me become a foot professional footballer. Do you think you would have had the career you had if you never went back to centre half? No, no one can can really answer this question. But yeah. uh, uh, I think it, the manager Pasquale Roseto was good on uh, because he was a defender as as a player right. when he was a player as well. I and mean, basically, he's been working mentally with me, telling me how important was the defender's rule. How important it was to you know keep the clean sheet. How important it was and proud it was to be a central half on his age and you know giving to me that kind of experience. You know, so I think he was very good on giving me a bit of bite to it. You know, just yeah, yeah. Uh, to involve me more and more in that kind of rule. And I have to say that uh, I don't know. Of course, uh, I never lost the that little. Uh, idea to go in scoring goals because that's uh, something that I really love to do but my career has been very very important because you know I could defend and sometimes I used to score some good goals too Brilliant So you just sitting in the dark speaking to you it's like we're in a mafia meeting or something <laughs> I'm fucking buzzing uh, and then you went to Fiorentina by the way I must say I used to watch Italian football every Sunday morning and that Fiorentina team was my team you, Delivio, Batistuta, Rui, Costa, Toldo, wow. What yeah, was that like to play? That time, uh, we were the seven sisters in Italy that time because Fiorentina was surrounded from AC Milan, Juventus, the usual. Plus, there was Fiorentina, Parma, Lazio as well. We were the seven sisters and it was very 
the best football I ever played. Well, I've ever seen most of all uh, because the most important players from all over the world were just in Italy in that period. Yeah. And every every Saturday, every Sunday, there was a very difficult game to play against. Even the smaller club, they had a fantastic players. Mm. Just think about players like Birov, like... Uh, uh, they used to play in a smaller club at that time, yeah. uh, La Venezia, Ascoli. So playing against small clubs, it was not easy at all. So I have to say that uh, I was very lucky. I was very lucky because I think I've been involved in the best football uh, all my career. But that season in Italy, you know, day in, day out, there were some unbelievable play. Even during the training. That's because... what I was going to say. How was it playing <laughs> up against Batistuta? Yeah, during the training, it was. Uh, would quite... you kick? Would you kick Batistuta? Absolutely. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, um, there was during the training uh, as you can put as much you want uh, uh, intensity and uh, strength, but it's never like a game. It's impossible. Yeah. I mean, um, you put your your hundred percent concentration there because you need to be accurate and uh, and uh, presumptuous in doing things. But during the game, uh, is a Different story. Just quickly, did you play against the real Ronaldo? Brazilian Ronaldo? Absolutely. I played against Ronaldo in the semi final of Cup Winner Cup. That Both was in 97, yeah, yeah. That's right. How yeah. was he? A monster. Easy a monster. for you, though, by Gamble. No, 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 easy. I think uh, uh, on those days, uh, we all respect with Ronaldo and Messi and these players. We are great players. But I think uh, that Ronaldo, I, I was very lucky as well because my debut. Uh, was a 16 and a half and I had the privilege to play against Diego Armando Maradona. No way. Absolutely, yeah. Did you take the pass No, no, because <laughs> I wasn't playing regular. I was just, you know, 16 and a half. But I um, I played against him, basically, yeah. I had uh, the second half against Napoli. We drew one each at home and we, in the Italian Cup, we beat them 2-0 at home again. Uh, so it uh, at that time in Italy, as I said, Milan had Van Basten and Gullit, Napoli had Maradona. The players, they were absolutely crazy, you know. So my my era as a football player has been full of unbelievable yeah. players, really. Did Maradona speak to you now? Well, actually, yeah. The, when when uh, my, we, we had the, the, the Italian Cup game against Barletta away, and then we played home against Napoli, actually, in, in, um, in the corridor where we used to do... The, the warm up, I uh, went and asked him uh, an autograph, you know, of course. And, uh, and he saw me with the body dressed on, you know. Yeah. He said, But you play for. I was already tall at the time, and he was a wee, wee guy. And he says to me, and I said, Mr. Maradona, can you sign a picture that for me, please? And he said, Yeah, but you're a body player. I said, Yeah, but, you know, I'm quite young. He said, How old are you? I was 16 and a half. He says to me, are you already so tall? <laughs> and I never grow up. He says to me, yeah, but I shall say, but, but you're strong enough anyway. <laughs> so it was great. It was good. But it was a genius, genius. Oh, amazing. Uh, so you were at Fiorentina. And then when did you first hear a Rangers interest? Well, actually, in the game you were mentioned before against Barcelona, um, my agent just before, I think it was in Barcelona, the away game, my agent uh, phoned me and said, uh, be careful today, be f it's, the game is so important, but play well because the clubs for England are coming, well, he said for England, but he didn't know because at, at that time, I think there were some Leeds United and a few other clubs that were looking for, for, for a central half in Italy and one of those players it was me. So he said, so you know that someone is looking for you and I think Rangers were there because then Chief... Uh, Chief uh, Scout uh, at that time, uh, Hugh Evans, uh, told me after when I signed for Rangers that he was watching me at, uh, at, uh, at Barcelona. And then they came also to watch the game uh, in Florence. And as far as I remember, Walter was there watching that game. So I think the first, uh, I'm not saying contact, but ideas about what kind of player they needed if I was the right man for that place uh, there wasn't that game as far as I remember as far as I know yeah and so did you meet Walter? no uh, no I just got uh, through your agent yeah, yeah yeah through the age no I couldn't play and meet, meet um, while well, you were still with other teams absolutely but Man United came in at 11th hour Man United came when I was already Mama Scotland Mama fucking me you think yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, Man United came uh, when uh, basically I was uh, in uh, Scotland, Loch Lomond, uh, and they made an offer. Um, and uh, to be fair, uh, 
I, I had, you know, just uh, spent the whole night basically with Walter and David Murray at the time watching Champions League final against uh, Juventus against uh, Borussia Dortmund, uh, talking a lot of things about the, the ideas, what the club needed to get better and better. So when the, the next morning my agent basically knocked on my door saying, Man United is just phone and send the fax with the, the offer. What do you want to do? And honestly, uh, wow. although Man United uh, at that time, you know, was not the Man United that after became, but still Man United, such a giant club. Uh, I just find uh, not right to go away. I mean, uh, I had sh shakes in the hands with the, the with Walter and with, with the with the with David Murray and Lorenzo has just one word, you know, I just uh, didn't think it was right to leave. Yeah. And uh, I decided to stay here because uh, I felt I felt well. I felt welcome. The weather was great, believe it <laughs> or not, in Oklahoma. It was sunny days, brilliant. <laughs> and, uh, and so I decided to, to, to stay here. But uh, I tell you, after so many years, so many season or now already gone if I go back I will do exactly the same choice yeah really mm, absolutely did you ever speak to Alex Ferguson I spoke with um, at that time the chief executive David Gill. was no Martin Edwards no Martin Edwards yeah, that's right yeah, yeah. Martin Edwards was the chief executive uh, and they were giving me great offer no much different between Rangers and Sales so the money were basically there there was no problem money 60,000 a week, wasn't it? Uh, don't remember. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> imagine you said, uh, imagine you took Walter's hand and went to Man United. Walter would have uh, done you already. It's not, it's not that. It's, it's just the fact that uh, sometimes you need to to take a decision in your life, you know? Yeah. Um, I know now that uh, the decision I made at that time was good. I don't know what decision would have done well for me or bad for me going to Man United. I don't know. I just know that uh, six years in Scotland have been amazing for me. So, yeah. uh, And if I go back, as I said, I will do exactly the same choice. Everyone who plays under Walter Smith raves about him. What is it that makes him so good? What, what is it that you liked about him straight away? Because he's like an older brother. He's a manager and uh, he knows... He, 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 I'm not saying he's playing with you, but he knows when to come closer to you and when to take a distance. Is uh, that kind of man managerial way to to be uh, polite in a, in a dressing room? He can be a good friend with you when you need it, but he can really hurt you if you need it too. Because uh, we at that time we were 20, 25 players, and everyone has a big personality, <clears throat> different ideas sometimes. How you think you can really improve the team as well or your rule can improve but the manager is there to is paid to make choices mm. and uh, you need to respect their choices so there are managers that sometimes they really force you to do things and i don't think on those days there are the best things to do because players now they are too powerful my idea uh walter i think um, like a bit like mcleish as well i think they've got this kind of uh, relationship with the player that they make uh, you know uh, a good empathy and mm. that's that's uh, i think that's that i think that's vital because um any manager for me if he's got good players can put the team on the pitch but then the difference between good manager normal my average manager is how much the player go on the pitch thinking about i would like to give my 100 percent or in a better way when they come out from the field the question that I always asked myself was, I've done everything today to win this game. I've done everything today to give my best to the manager and to help my teammates. That was the question. And I think uh, the way Walter and uh, Alex used to, to manage, I think, uh, suits me, yeah. me for me, yeah. You said that you could go mad as well. Can you remember the first time that you thought, oh, wow? There have been many times because uh, the, 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 I think uh, the manager job is very hard, very tough, because you need to take a decision. And sometimes decision can hurt players. And no, just one, maybe more than one. Uh, but the, the good point is that uh, you need to be ready to switch. And after maybe a minute, laughing again, because that's the way it is. That's the way 
It should be. Yeah. We we should never forget what kind of kind of job we do. We play football. We just enjoy. We run about. We get paid a lot of money. We have fun. We got fame. So you can't really let uh, big problems get through your life while you are running, uh, chasing balls and scoring goals. It's yeah. crazy. So we are very fortunate to do this kind of job. Yeah, but see, what, 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 like, what, what, what specifically would he go mad at you for? What no, 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 not with me. Too no, much, no, 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 with me. No, I, I never played really much underwater because I got the injury. Yeah. But no, no, no. But I, while I was injured, uh, I could uh, understood and uh, watch what kind of the Scottish football was made for uh, under that team that were winning the eleven in a row, the nine in a row. Sorry. Um, so it was good for me to 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 learn many things. And I wasn't really much involved that season, but I couldn't really see what kind of players I had as a teammates and a manager there. So no, not no, never from Walter. Absolutely, no. I played just five games under him. Yeah, you said your Achilles went ten months. How devastating was that? Is that when you hit the Baileys? Uh, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, I played last six months of Fiorentina with this Achilles problem. And um, when I came at Rangers, they knew the situation because I made it clear, listen, I need to have an operation. And uh, actually, uh, with Fiorentina, we've been already in, in Antwerp to see Professor Martens to check this problem. What, uh, and there was not really a major problem. But of course, Rangers bought me and uh, I didn't find uh, myself uh, in the right situation to say to them, no, I'll go where I want. So they said to me, we would like to take you to our own surgeon down in London. And that's what we did. We, do, we went down in London and basically we're talking about early in June. So basically end of the season. In fact, I missed last two games for Fiorentina this season down to this uh, operation. When I came back here, basically in July for the preseason, I started to run. But from the first day, I didn't really feel right. I mm. felt I was thinking maybe, you know, it's just because the bone needs to be healed probably uh, better in a better way. But as more I was running and making the work heavier and heavier, I wasn't doing right at all. So basically in August, we went to see this professor again. And, uh, and I understand why he just made another small operation on my Achilles and fucked up again, wow. actually. In fact, basically, after 15 days, I couldn't even walk properly. I had to walk with the, basically my size food. They were normal years now, 42 and a half. At that time, I used to walk for 45. Because I couldn't really, I couldn't walk with the normal shoe. Um, of course, we, at this time, I started to fear for my career. Really? And, yeah, you thought that could be it? Yeah, because Achilles is something quite dangerous to to think about and uh, I spoke with Walter at that time and I said uh, this time I take my own uh, chance I go wherever I want because this is my career if you agree or not I don't care and he says no no Lorenzo I understand uh, as, as the better you become as the better you as soon you come back here as, as soon as for everyone it's better you know so then I went back to basically to Antwerp and to Professor Martens, and uh, of course, he, he made the operation, the final one, but he says to me, the time uh, is definitely longer than the, the two months that we, we were already planning, because he said, you've been running and chasing and do training with the tendon basically scratching clear on the bone. So now the tendon is definitely damaged. Right. So to get repaired, you need at least six months. So in total, from June to April, more or less, that I came back, it was 10 months. Was it hard when you're watching the team going for 10 in a row and you couldn't help? That was probably one of the worst regrets I've got in my career because uh, thinking about you come here, they're spending almost £5 million to get here, try to win the, the 10 in a row. Uh, the supporters are waiting for you. Everyone is waiting for you, you know, and... And you can't do anything because a professor down in London just made two big mistakes. And of course, then, you know, when I came back, uh, basically, 
Walter already announced that he was leaving the end of the season. And I felt guilt in some ways because, you know, I couldn't really give what I was supposed to. And, um, but that, that's part of life. That's part of life. In fact, uh, you know, that was an end of the era. But the next year, everything uh, went uh, in a better way. Of I'll course. tell you what would have helped to that 10 months at Glasgow Nightlife. <laughs> oh. Well, you I, liked? Uh, at that time, honestly, I couldn't really understand anything because I was so concerned about my injury. Right. And uh, I was so focused on coming back as soon as possible. And in fact, uh, for a guy that never drank uh, no even... Uh, a glass of beer at the time, you're talking about the Baileys. Yeah. <laughs> and that period it was quite strange because um, I was staying in Reno's house because I couldn't walk, I couldn't do stairs at all because I was uh, I had a plaster for almost two months after the third operation. And yeah, Reno had uh, basically a kind of flat, nice, and I couldn't just really walk without any problem. And uh, one night, basically, we were just, uh, just chatting and things like that. And there was this Baileys on the table there and uh, I started to drink Baileys because it, it doesn't look like alcohol, but it's alcohol yeah, anyway. Yeah. And because it's so sweet, you, you drink it. It's, it's nice. It doesn't, doesn't. But as I said, if you don't never been drinking alcohol, after you drink half a bottle of Baileys, you <laughs> start to feel it. Deep. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, but the worst part of it was that uh, having this plaster, I couldn't really sleep at all during that at least 15 days before you know, I started drinking Baileys. And uh, then now he has learned fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, whoa, man, that this sounds good. Yeah. That's a, But after a week or something, drinking almost a bottle a day or something, you know. Because you wait on that. That's yeah. right. That's what about what... Gattuso? Did he like uh, a Baileys? Yeah, just a bit. Yeah, we yeah. used to, about, Reno has a fantastic family, so we used to, to talk and play cards, uh, watching TV. His mom, his dad, they were making a lot of food. Of, Lovely. It was it was uh, the good side of that uh, that ten months of injury in some ways. What about Buckfast? You ever tried that? Sorry, what? Buck, Buckfast. I don't know what Scottish it is. Scottish wine, wine, wine in Scotland. Yeah, you know you not have that. I don't think you have a Scottish <laughs> wine here. Uh, right, you said the second season, new beginning with that. You're changing manager and players as well. Yeah, big change, big change, big change about uh, lifestyle rules. Uh, anything changed completely. For for better or worse. Um, some ways the worst, some ways the better because we started to win again. And when you win, uh, uh, the, the worst gets uh, on the side. It's not uh, in, in the first, in the front of page, as as I know. Uh, but after two years, uh, things starting to get worse because uh, the the way Adoka used to manage it was not really good for anyone, not for the club, not for, for the players. In fact, uh, the other side of the town is starting to take advantage of that. In fact, we we were not playing anymore as a team. Uh, Why we, was that? Is it too strict? Because, well, too strict is not the right word. I think it was uh, too, too bitter in, uh, in, in rules, in, yeah. uh, in, uh, in making him always in the best position and making the team look stupid. Um, it was never involved in when we were in, in small words when we were winning uh, we were winning because him we were losing because us that's not a good point of view as a manager uh, he was never taking uh, responsibilities on what uh, it was wrong in the team um, he never really was talking with the players not at all uh, he was just on his way or no way yeah, you know, kind of, uh, yeah. that, that's not the way I think uh, managers should should do, especially in a dressing room where you had so many foreign players, where you have big personality players as well. Uh, in fact, I had a problem with him because uh, while we were not doing well in the, the, the third season, uh, I started to, to try to talk, you know, to say, Gaffer, we, we got a problem. We, I mean, we are not doing what you want. Because probably we we don't understand what you want in this moment, so trying to get close to us or we are coming too close to, but try to do something. Yeah. Uh, and basically just turn around against me, saying, "Well, I don't think the the way you're behaving is good enough uh, uh, in the dressing room as a captain. Uh, the, the 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 press is jumping on you. 
because at the time I had broke up with my girlfriend as well, so the press was chasing me to, to find out stupid stories as well. And I said, that's nothing to do with what we do in the football. Uh, that's private life, but private life doesn't, doesn't really Only bother your business, me. business, isn't it? Absolutely. And uh, some ways, basically, I understood that uh, he wanted to basically have an escape goal. Yeah, yeah. give it a escape goal. When I found out, when I understood that he was keeping going, doing what he was doing in the previous seasons, I said, that's, that's wrong. But if you think, you know, taking away the armament from me can solve the problem, that is crazy. But anyway, from now on, this is the armament. Do whatever you want, but don't speak to me anymore as a human being. Speak to me as a player if you want. If you don't, I don't care. Uh, then after basically the next day, next very day, I found out that the new captain was Barry Ferguson. And now at that time, Barry was a young player. And we were not in a great situation. We were, you know, in the quite big problems. Uh, in the dressing room, you had people like Arthur Newman, George Albert, Stefan Kloss, player with a lot of experience. And with all respect with Barry at that time, I mean, not because I didn't think Barry, because after Barry became a good captain, don't wonder. But still, at that time, you could have put so much weight on a young boy. Instead of giving an experienced player like Arthur, which it was already his captain at uh, PSV Eindhoven. Yeah. So someone who could really basically keep doing a good job in the dressing room. Uh, because I think I've done a great job in the dressing room, but from his point of view, it was not a good job. Because uh, uh, as I said, uh, you are not a captain just because you, you, you got uh, the armband here. You are a captain because you need to be first. You need to be responsible. You need to be a leader. You need to be someone who leading by example. And I'm not talking about just in the pitch, also outside the pitch, mm. because uh, there are so many things when you are on the spotlight that you, you can't do it, you can't. So I think my job as captain has uh, been, not just in Scotland, it's been all over since I was young because I, I felt uh, very uh, full of responsibilities when I used to play uh, since I was young. And uh, so I think are the, the, your same teammates will give you the armament because they they see in you the, that kind of leadership that you need to be uh, there. Uh, you can't really buy it. Yeah. It's something you, yeah. you're born with. Yeah, yeah. You're born with it. And uh, so for me, that didn't really bother the fact that uh, he took me the Armand, but it was the way he did it. Mm. He took the Armand away from me, trying to give news to newspapers to take away pressure from him again. And that's what I said to him. You're not taking, again, responsibilities of what we are not doing on the field. So I decided to, to go away, basically, that season. The end of that season, of course, because the season went wrong and wrong, everything, nothing changed. And uh, David Murray, basically, I spoke with him in, in the summer, saying, of course, I'm leaving. I um, can't, can't hold anymore with this guy here. Uh, he died never he never never made a mistake it's it's yeah. it's not possible and he said to me lorenzo i don't want you to leave uh, because uh, i'm the owner of this club advocate made a mistake i know that uh, but for what we done is done in the last 3 years uh, we starting again with him i said i will try to go and that's why i didn't sign a new contract for ranger at that time I said, no, Gaffer, I'm no, no, sorry, Chairman, I'm not going to sign a new contract. Under him, I'm not going to sign. And I will wait. Uh, my agent knows that uh, as soon as got a good chance, I'll go away because um, I don't want to need to stay here anymore. And uh, basically, nothing happened. I mean, uh, the problem was that uh, I understood that the situation couldn't really become better and better. Yeah. It couldn't. Because with the advocate, the, the rules, they were stupid. But like, he must have liked you at first, big man, because he made you captain at first. Uh, so at first it just got on. No, but, uh, you know, I, I, I am a guy who the dressing room like to 
to organize things, making the place all together, you know, making things work properly. Uh, I talk a lot, maybe sometimes too much. I was just thinking that. But, but, that I, know. <laughs> but uh, I do this in purpose to make things happen. If you talk, if you communicate, then things can happen. If you don't, I don't think things will get better. I mean, I try to, 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 to get players all together, having dinner outside and nighttime in town or whatever, just to make things better, especially if we're in a dressing room where there are so many foreign, you yeah. know? And that that's, was vital for us. But the rules we had, they were absolutely crazy. What sort of stuff? Like lunchtime. You couldn't start eating before he was saying, enjoy your meal. Or uh, you couldn't wear winter time. I would like to wear a jacket on because I feel a bit cold. No. Oh, everyone is good to wear the jacket or no one. Or um, Bermudas, same story. You couldn't use Bermuda, otherwise other one, everyone should use Bermuda. Colored boots, there was no possible having colored boots. Or, or black, yes, honestly. Like boys, like we boys. Uh, in pre-season, pre-season when you do twice a day training and your feet, especially in the beginning of the season, you can get blisters or wherever. Normally, you, you would like to work with feet flops just to get your feet relaxed. You couldn't work with feet flops. Or your shirt should be inside the trouser, not outside the trouser. And the rules going and on and on and on. So at the beginning, you accept that because... Yeah. He comes, new manager, we started to winning, and it was okay. But getting worse and worse, the rules, never lay off a bit, just putting every time mobile phone, they were not allowed on the bus going to play a game. Or Aberdeen, whatever. three hours, no phone. No that. phone. Wow. That, honestly, now I am not remember all the rules, but there were so many stupid rules. And you can imagine that, you know, even when you win, you try to relax a bit. I'm not saying you, you, you're allowed to do everything you want, but at least if you win, it means that you're doing good things. So give us something yeah. back, you know? You never. Instead, it's, it's ruled that we're getting worse and worse all the time. So till the point we're starting to, to lose, lose games. And at that point, all the rules were no good anymore yeah. because, you know... They were not good. Uh, he never understood that. Uh, I don't know if after he went away from Rangers, he, he changed his rules. But honestly, uh, when Alec came and the results are there, I'm not something that is not something that I'm just dreaming of. Fact, it's here. Uh... He went. Alex came. Six months to the end, we were like second in the league, and no one. No one in the whole over football world would have a bet that would have won the two cups, the yeah. Scottish Cup and, of course, the League Cup as well. By the way, no phone. You must have about five birds in Glasgow and no phone for Just two Just five. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. Uh, you talked about you being the captain, though. Um, were you one that would shout and ball at people? Yes, I've done it, but not shout in a bad way. Just uh, shouting... Uh, well, I'm quite loud. Yeah. But uh, trying to be... Um, critical on the point to say, come on guys, wake up, you can't miss that chance, we can't concede that goal, these kind of things. Yeah. Uh, it, sometimes I can be arrogant, yeah, I know that, because, uh, but that, that, someone has to do it. Mm. Uh, if my teammates, they know me, they know that there is no harsh, there is no any bad way, it's just reality. There is, in, when you need to change things on the field, there is no middle way. There yeah. is a good way or bad way. Uh, most of my teammates, partners, I'm talking about Craig Moore, players, defense lineup, yeah, more yeah. or less, or holding midfielders. I've been, I'm not saying fighting, but honestly, telling each other everything, even bad words each other. Yeah. But this is a part of the game. Of course, it's part That's of the game. a part of the game just yeah. to make things working yeah. properly. After three seconds, everything's gone. Straight after the game, we've been going out, eating together. That's the way... Who's, who's the one that you would always argue with? I don't argue. I'm, not argue, but just always well, back and forth. The teammates, the ones are near me, yeah. of course. So my partner in the central half, my left back, right back, 
and of course the holding midfielder because we had the goalkeeper sometimes too because we were the heart of the team you know yeah. and when it when for some reason the movement the diagonal or the the the, the, the how do you call uh, the the lineup was not right or the pressure was not right you know you started to square each other and say what the fuck yeah, I was thinking get the fucking line you know that's that's that's, that's uh, football that's food that language but if you take it personally on the field then you're crazy yeah, yeah. you're not good to do this job you know because we've had Arthur Newman on yeah so did you how can you shout at Arthur Newman he's such a nice guy man is he but the same he's, with he's, he's, back? Yeah. yeah he's not about, just during the game yeah, yeah and then not, afterwards forgot on the field I've seen on the field uh, through my career people getting like uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde you yeah. know what I mean yeah people that outside the field that are absolutely like mouse and they go on the field they can become a fucking lion yeah or other way around because maybe you know they get too much pressure and so their personality on the field just disappeared completely cool, yeah. uh, but I just believe that uh, if if you communicate if you and even in sometimes in a bad way, uh, shout to your teammates because shouting, uh, in some ways, makes you know attention get higher. Switches on you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you said the captain as well. Social events. So where would we just go out in Glasgow? Meals, nights out. Um, who, who, was, who was the characters on, on nights out? Who oh, we funny? had a few characters there. We had a few characters and well, Previous, of course, the first season when I joined Rangers, McCoy, Steve, Durant, uh, so many. How was Coy- McCoy? We've had them on here as well. How was yeah, Gascoigne and McCoy? Fantastic. Well, great lad, great players, first of all, but what a great guys. I mean, um, I couldn't really, as I said, I couldn't really uh, help them much that season, but I couldn't really see why Rangers, they were winning nine in a row because they were, you know, in some ways, I, I was stealing a bit of their kind of ideas how to play Scottish football, or how to gel together and do things properly, you know. Did you ever, were you ever on the receiving, receiving end of a, a Gascoigne prank? Did you ever do anything to your clothes? Uh, well, he tried, he tried once, but uh, because, uh, you know, he could speak a bit of English, while I was, uh, sorry, Italian, right. sorry. While I was injured uh, that season, I saw him doing things in the dressing room and while, while the team, they were out because he was doing whatever, I don't remember what now. And I said to him, Paul, don't do this to me. If you do this to me, I will really lift him. You're on the fucking there, I tell you. Don't do it. So once, uh, basically, I've done it. Yeah, he was trying to do it and I, I was just running around the field trying to get catch up with fitness or whatever. So I finished my training and I went in the restroom and I saw him doing tantings things on my socks, whatever. I don't remember what he was doing. And honestly, I took him from behind and I just put right on the fucking wall. I said, what did I fucking tell you? And he started to shake, say, no, please, Lorenzo, please don't do it, don't do it. So it was, that's it, nothing else. Uh, Paul was a great lad. And McCoy, the same, but he just constantly wind up. Yeah, McCoy, the junior, they were fucking... Jury, there was an unbelievable. Honestly, we had a fantastic in Ferguson. No, I don't want the goalie. We had a fantastic team. That team it was, but even now, sometimes when we we see each other in some events, some things like that, celebrations is honestly, the atmosphere is is brilliant. Did it's you ever get a pint with McCoy and Gascoigne? Outside yeah, the- we went. We went a couple of times. Uh, well, more than a couple of times. But then after, I, as I said, I couldn't really do much because I was under surgery and couldn't drink anyway. Uh, but I went a couple of times with them. Yeah, TJ Friday at that time used to to be the place where uh, we used to go get some food and most of the time drinks. Yeah, and then plenty afterwards as well. Absolutely. Yes, definitely. And uh, that team swept the boards. Sorry, the the, the treble team. How, yeah. how good the season was that? Uh, well, the first season. Uh, Winning the treble was something brilliant, probably unexpected as well, because um, I think when you change so much, it's not easy to to get that feeling right away. But uh, in some ways, I think we during the season we starting to get uh, better and better, more confident, and uh, and really um, putting everything all together. Although we had uh, those rules, well, as I said, but still we wanted to really to 
bring back trophies to, to Rangers. And that's what we did. Basically, we, every game for us was uh, the best game of the season. And uh, we went on the pitch and we, 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 we were very unit. We were very unit as a, as a players, as a team. And a chance to win the league at Celtic Park. Was there never any doubt you would get the three points out there? Uh, well, not really. Um, that, that period of the season, we didn't play well. Um, we were coming from two, three results. They were not, even we were winning, but we were not really performing well, probably because uh, end of the season, uh, almost. Uh, so I remember that we won the game against Aberdeen home uh, and we were uh, like uh, probably four points ahead of uh, Celtic uh, because we drew a couple of games in a row just before Aberdeen game. And we had to play in a, in, a, in Celtic Park and still to play three or four games, as far as I remember. And uh, so it was basically hard one because if we had lost a game there, uh, one point just clear, yeah. you never know. Three games to go, four games to go, everything can happen. Uh, but And I remember in the dressing room, uh, well, sorry, in newspapers, uh, some uh, interview from... Celtic player, their manager, whatever, that uh, they were really uh, saying we're going to win against them, you know, we're going to make things bigger and bigger. So what I've done basically the day I took a few articles and just before the training session, I went in the dressing room and I put like on the, on the wall the article Celtic and telling my, my teammates, guys, that's what uh, yeah, the South of the town uh, is telling us or they are waiting for us. So... Make sure Saturday or Sunday, whatever the game was now, I don't remember. Make sure on the field they're going to regret what they're going to say or what they have said. And uh, so I think uh, in some ways, I don't know if my message got there, but I just remember that in the dressing room, there was a silence like here now, honestly. It was, uh, no one was talking, just the manager was say some good things, but to be fair, no one was caring about him. Yeah. Everyone, no, no Bermuda shorts nah, on the pitch. Yeah. Everyone, <laughs> everyone was just thinking what to do on the field. Everyone was, was, was concentrated. And there are some footage of uh, the team just through the corridor of Celtic Park. And you could see our faces, you know, well committed and uh, really focused on what to do. And that's what we've done. Basically, we just uh, embarrassed them completely. What the were you field. like before I Celtic Rangers game? Were you quite loud? In the dressing room? No, no, no at all. Everyone uh, has his own view to, 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 to prepare the game. No, no, I was quite easy yeah. uh, thinking what to do on the field, thinking about my eventually opponent on the other side to do the strikers, the two strikers, the three strikers, depends what kind of team you play against. No, no, I wasn't. No. Was there ever any player that you thought I need to get him going? Was there anyone but that you that, felt had to help? That, that's, that's happened in the field. It's, it's, it's almost impossible you do in the dressing room. Maybe you can do half time eventually. Yeah, in half time you can do it. But before the game, no. You, you, you try to be general on, on, on the dressing room just before the game. Yeah, because you don't know what kind of game you can expect. And what a game. What, what did you make it when Hugh Dallas got hit in the, the head of a coin? Well, we were already winning 1-0 at that time, and uh, as far as I remember. And, of course, uh, everything was worse. Well, I, I could as, even expect the, the suspension of a game because, you know, it's not something common happened that the, the referee got hit from a coin or whatever. From, and he was bleeding, by the way. So I was expecting anything, but it was good to say, you know, I will keep going, not a problem. And, uh, you know, in, in that situation, you don't know what to expect because a referee can even be intimidated from that kind of and can uh, make a few mistakes in some games like that. But Udala was absolutely fantastic that game, really good. But most of all, we were great. We were great. We, we didn't give them uh, not even a chance. So uh, the game was absolutely perfect. Probably one of the best games I've seen Rangers play. How good is the atmosphere, especially when you win at Celtic Park? Is well, Park? the atmosphere was absolutely wonderful because uh, as more the game was going on and on, uh, uh, our support they were getting louder and louder and the rest of the stadium was getting quiet. quiet. So we could hear from behind us in the second half, of course, most of all, all the supporters getting crazy. You know, it was a piece of history made because no one done it before. So it was absolutely important. 
And one of only rain, five Rangers captains to win the treble. Did you know that at the time? Yeah, yeah. I've been Is twice. that in the back I, of your mind? I've uh, won the treble twice, actually. As captain? Yeah. As <laughs> right. a, uh, yeah, it's, it's something that at that time, when you do it, you don't really put much attention. After so many years after your retirement, then somebody's telling you, can you imagine, the whole history of Rangers, you are one of the five. Uh, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a big achievement, and I'm so proud of it, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you were a big one for getting the top off as well. <laughs> you loved that, yeah. didn't you? Uh, it's part of the show. Part of the show at times. Were you a big one for hitting the gym, big man? Uh, did you hit the gym? Uh, yeah, but not too much. Nah. Not too much because uh, you need to be careful about your weight and things like that. Especially I was already big as a player. I couldn't really put a lot of weight on. So I used to do weights, but lightweight just to get uh, toned, basically. Yeah, no, just for no, the girls. Yeah. Uh, see that terrible winning team? Best player? Who was the one that you, you, you thought he's a, he's a top player? Uh, it would be unfair for the others. I think... Uh, Fuck the others. Come on, give us one. No, 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 <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> Honestly, I'm... I'm uh, it's, I've always been thinking that it's a team sport. Yeah. It's a, it's, sorry, it's, it's a team sport and uh, no one is better. Unless you got Maradona or Ronaldo in the team yeah. who makes a difference, then and then they can make a difference. Or they, you can, you, they can use that. Uh, when you're winning as a team, uh, it, it's perfect because anyone needs the other one. And that was the good thing of my team, my Rangers team at the time. We were... Uh, a fantastic club, a fantastic uh, uh, spirit there. Uh, you could see everyone uh, chasing the right, uh, the right way. Everyone that, going the same direction, yeah. Because I was hoping that you were going to say Bob Malcolm. Bob, uh, Bob has been a fantastic <laughs> guy there, a uh, lovely guy. Who liked pizza more? You're from Italy. Who liked pizza more, you or Bob? Probably Bob. <laughs> <laughs> he told us to ask you about uh, shot of Avalanche in Dubai. Yeah, we were, uh, I don't remember if it was a winter break or something. And uh, and we were trying to play fo- go golf. Uh, and I was taking some lessons at this time of golf. So I tried to, to tell Shota how to hit the ball properly. And of course, I missed the fucking ball there. <laughs> and everyone was watching. Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, brilliant. So Dick, Dick obviously leaves. Um, how much confidence does Alec McLeish give you? Because he's went on and beat Celtic twice that year as well. Uh, Alec, uh, Alec came in the dressing room knowing that uh, there was not much to change because the, the, the plays were exactly the same. He had just to change uh, the, the motivation. He had to change the responsibilities. He had to change, uh, to give us back again that kind of trust that we really needed. And in fact, uh, when he came, think about, I was suspended for a game or something. And because I didn't have a chance to go and see the family in Italy, I said to advocate, uh, I, will, I couldn't play in a modern well away game, said, can I go in Italy for three days or whatever, just to stay, be spend time with the family? He said, yeah, yeah, no problem, go, go. Um, while I was in Italy, uh, Alec McLeish took it over, basically, okay, you know? Oh, well, I got found out this news, but whatever, I knew that. And... Uh, just the day before I come back here, I got a phone call from a number that I didn't know. And uh, I went on the phone, hello, who's talking? And uh, from the other side of the phone, say, hi, Lorenzo, it's Alec McLeish, you and your manager. Yeah, right, who's a fucking taking the piss, I said. <laughs> I thought it was my teammates, you know, uh, taking the yeah. piss. Yeah, 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 okay, Lorenzo is Alex McLeish, is your manager here. I said, yeah, come on, come on, please. Now, come on, guys, I'm no time for this shit. <laughs> so Alex from the other side started to say, Lorenzo, it's fucking Alex here. <laughs> so I started to understand that he was the real Alex. Yeah. I said, Gaffa, sorry, but uh, I thought it was a joke from the guy. He said, no, no, it's not a joke, it's me. Uh, I know you're in Italy, spending a bit of time with the family. Um, I know you're coming back tomorrow, uh, which is Saturday. Uh, we have a game against the mother. Well, although you are suspended, I would like to see you in the dressing room. So please, I say, yeah, guys, uh, Gaffa, no worry. I just was thinking to come to watch the game, but you no, know, I know, I know, because that I know that, but I would like to see you there in the dressing room just before the game. That was the 
the approach that uh, Alex had with us, and not just with me, with everyone there. Um, another situation, Christmas period, we, we had to play against Hibs away. As far as I remember, we, we played the 26th, as far as I remember. Um, so the day before the game, Christmas Day, basically, he said to us, guys, uh, we have two options. On 24th, we got training, of course. And then you go home and you go, you know, it's Christmas. You can stay, stay, spend the time with the family. We drink. Don't be stupid. I would like to give you 25th off. So no training. And see you in the morning here to go uh, play against the Ibs in, in, uh, in Edinburgh. Uh, but, of course, it's up to you. I would like to give you something, but I would like something back uh, on yeah. the game. We went in Edinburgh and we won for nothing. Well, I don't remember even the game now. It's too long time ago. Uh, that was the approach that Alex had. You know, the players needed a bit of confidence, responsibilities, and because we were a good team. Yeah. And that's why, you know, in a matter of a month or something, the confidence was back again. And in fact, the first game against Celtic, Oh, I remember all the newspapers, the news, and things like that. They were not giving us uh, chance. no chance to win against Celtic. Um, we won it, but we won it uh, with the, the strength, the character, the, the mentality, the, we, the desire. We were a different team. We were a different team. We, we wanted definitely more than them. And that was something that two months before was not there was not there anymore. It was gone. And Alec was clever to understand that we were the same players, though. There was no new players there this, during the season. You come by his players, you know. That says enough how good uh, Alex made us, you know, come back at the level, I think, that we really deserve to be. Was it, was it difficult playing when you weren't captain anymore? Even though it was a new manager, do you still have that wee... Mm. Not really. Well, Alec was, was quite clear with me and he said, uh, Lorenzo, I know what our advocate did to you, but I'm not going to change. And before he finished to say, I said, Gaffa, don't, don't even go there because it will be unfair for Barry. I said, uh, don't, I've been there and I know it's not nice what, what the advocate did to me. So if you're going to do that to Barry, although I was the previous captain, it would be not nice for Barry. Especially yeah. now that things are getting better. So I don't think, I don't need, I don't know, I said, and it is true actually, I don't need to, to be a captain to, to show my personality on the field. I've never done it. I never needed the armband. My personality has always been there. I don't care if I was a captain or not captain. My way to, to be on the, the field, to, to behave and to, to be a leader, is, it doesn't really matter if you're a captain. I think. Those are qualities that you, you are born with. Yeah. You are not buying it. How much did you relish those game coming up against the likes of Larson? Did you need to be at the top level, uh, the top of your game? It's always great games. When you play against these great players, it's always nice to stand up and say, count on me, you know, it's, it's lovely, it's demanding, it's, it's difficult. But uh, I love it. I love that kind of game. Ever so. give, give each other verbals? Oh, plenty. Plenty yeah. against any kind of play. Yeah, when you play, it's, it's kind of, it's a game in the game, you know. It uh, becomes a, a, a mental game as well sometimes, you know. You need to try to be smarter. So you try to to use anything you can in a good way. I mean, don't get me wrong, not going too far. Yeah. But uh, yeah, plenty of times, with, not just with Eric, but with so many other players all over my career. But if you ask any player, someone will tell you the truth. You, you tell each other so many bad things. See, when you're playing against that guy at last do you want to kick him early doors? Early on in the game? Uh, not really. Not really, because you can't. You need to be smart. You need to be smart to, to be there and the right moment when the ball is there to let it feel that uh, there is no way that you're going to get away from me, you know? Yeah. Uh, give him uh, the, 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 the worst option, you know? When you play against the good players, you can't give them the, the best option. You should uh, choose because you can't win all the time. So you, give, you should give them the, the worst option. Like give him a shot with the left foot, for example, or 
you need to choose where to take him on the side or on the on the on the on the side of the goal. You go on the line way yeah. where the line is my friend is not your friend because if you go the goes out is is my ball. So there are many things that you try to do when you play against uh, smart players because uh, you know you can't win all the time. So you need to use your brain and. Uh, and do things making his life more complicated. That's why I was hopeless. Uh, <laughs> right, the same was to happen again. Two thousand two Scottish Cup final beating Celtic. That must have been one of the maddest games you've played in. Uh, yeah, it. Uh, Did you get nervous before big games, big one? Uh, no, no, I won't say really nervous. I was anxious. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I just wanted to start the game. Yeah. Uh, because uh, I know there was a trophy waiting for us, for me, for my teammates. And uh, no, uh, never be afraid about the football game, but definitely excited. Like maybe this is the best word to use, excited to this game. The game was a wonderful game because we we did really had a fantastic game, yeah. Would that be your, that be your favorite game as a Rangers? Uh, one of, yeah. one of, because uh, for for all what we've been through, I think uh, winning that trophy, it was giving us more confidence, and most of all, was giving to the supporter a fantastic end of the season, and eventually the new future in Rio in front of us. You know, can you describe the feeling when Lovinkran scores ten seconds to go? Uh, well, the game was uh, quite equal, but uh, I think we had something more than them. We 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 could. Uh, uh, in I don't know from outside because that is a question you should ask supporters or reporters or whatever. But from inside the field, the I had always the feeling that we could have uh, won that game before the Peters goals. You know because. Uh, the goalkeeper made a few saves. Uh, uh, last 30 minutes of the game, they didn't really um, give us much problems. Physically, we definitely wanted it more. We were definitely stronger than them. So I was thinking, we need to score a goal. We, we can't do it. We, we definitely can. Uh, the feeling was that uh, we, we needed you know, a, a small chance to, to, to grab it. And Peter did it. So yeah. when he did it, it was over. It was over because they couldn't really chase him back. No chance. Would you ever get emotional after a game like that? Uh, nah, not much. Uh, but uh, the emotion, it's, it's, it's always there because it doesn't really matter how many trophies you win. When you win a trophy, it's so important. In, in the field, there, are no, there is no space for feelings in the yeah. field. You know? <laughs> after the resurgence under McLeish, did you feel confident going into the next season that you could win the league again? Yeah, well, uh, not confident but uh, to winning everything, but definitely uh, really up for it. Yeah. Because uh, we knew that uh, uh, we were definitely at top level again. And uh, it was another season uh, where we could win because we've been capable of doing it the previous season, two cups. But of course, the season was really difficult because um, you never know. You never know what is behind the corner. Uh, but I have to say, we, we had a fantastic season. I mean, everyone were really strong enough to to cruise during the season from right from the first day of the game. Uh, uh, can't really complain for the behaviour of the players inside the pitch and off the pitch. We were definitely a stronger side that season. So you got into that season, did you know it would be your last one? Uh, it was a quite strange season because we were cruising. We were cruising like 10 points or something, as far as I remember. But we were, by the end of the season... Uh, the way we, we, we drew, as far as I remember, three games in a row or something. I was banned for a couple of games. A uh, uh, few other players injured. And I remember that uh, at least we drew two games, that's for sure. We drew two games. One of those was in Dundee. Uh, three each is a long error. We missed two penalties. We another one was Aberdeen, whatever. Um, it was very strange to uh, to explain it to understand because from a team that uh, 
you know, has been doing so well, so great during the season, already one cup right in our pocket. Uh, dropping points like that, it wasn't not really something you were expecting. But saying that, we got basically at the point that we were in the end of the season, well, last game of the season actually, uh, basically play at home against uh, Dunfermline and they were playing away against Kilmarnock and we knew that there was no game that you could control. You should have won the game and scoring as much goal you could because, uh, you know, if for some reasons uh, we could have drew the game or win, won the game just 1-0, we'd have lost in the league yeah. eventually. Uh, so there was a game uh, that uh, there was no time to, to relax. And that game started even worse because <laughs> we used to, to, to score soon with Michael Moses, but I remember. But then the formula equalized after uh, two minutes, five minutes, something like that. And then I could, could imagine the supporters were starting to, to, to panicking because also the news from Kilman we were not very good because yeah. Celtic were winning 1-0 or 2-0. But I think uh, when the team is strong and the unit and, and they know what they want, uh, you get a result. In fact, we, we started to scoring goals in that game and we finished game 7-1 as far as I remember. Yeah. We, we, we were definitely... The best team during that season, 100%. See, just on yourself, at what stage of that season did you decide that this would be my last year at Rangers? Never. I never had a chance to, to think about that. I had, uh, I had just uh, a month before the, the, the end of the season, uh, uh, Alec just, uh, just got a phone call uh, saying to me, are you in the house? I said, yeah, boss, what's wrong? I said, I need to talk to you face to face. Why not? So he came to my house saying to me, at that time, the, 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 the club uh, starting to have a little financial problems, you know. Uh, I think the chairman was there, uh, but it was just, uh, David Murray was not anymore. Uh, uh, the, 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 the presence it was there anymore. It was John McClellan, as far as I remember, it was yeah. the, 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 the chairman there in some ways trying to, to, to make things a bit wet, better financial-wise for the club. Um, and Alec came in my house and to me, Lorenzo, um, basically, who's talking now, is not your manager, but like an older brother. Yeah. Um, but, but he could never be your older brother because you're far too good looking to be his brother. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, anyway. <laughs> and uh, I had one year left in my contract with Ranger at that time. And he says to me, I know you got one year left in the contract, but and probably you wanted another year, two years with Rangers. At the moment, the club can offer you, cannot really offer you a new contract. And I said, what? why are you telling me this now? He said, because the club uh, has quite some financial problems and uh, I know that there are some English club uh, looking for you. Uh, we don't know what the situation is going to be in the future, but at the moment, uh, we are not going to offer you a new contract. So, as a brother, I'm telling you, football career is quite short. If you got an offer from England and it's a good offer, don't, don't say no. I mean, think about it. Because the club will try to, to get money. And you're one of the few who's got a good market eventually that will try to get a bit of money from you. So I said to him, uh, Gaffa, I don't really want thinking about us now. I mean, there's still lots to play for, one month to go. I don't know, by the end of the season, I will uh, think about it. I will go away back to Italy and taking a rest of a week. And then uh, eventually I will take my decision, which was a very, probably one of the hardest decisions of all my life because I was thinking to basically finish my career at Rangers, you know, during my sixth year at Glasgow, you know, I found myself very well in a perfect place, a fantastic feeling with the supporters, you know, so it was, was great, it was great for me. So through my head was, you know, play two, three, four years yet and then just finish career here. Uh, basically, nothing, that's the true story. And when we won uh, the... Scottish Cup, the treble actually, yeah. against Dundee. 
newspapers started to talk about myself, Arthur Newman, a few other players going, you know, and but I didn't really had any decision yet. Just the teammates they were saying, "Oh, you're going, Lorenzo." They wanted to to do a little celebration, you know, to me, and like they did with Arthur. But I started to cry because I know there was a, like a perfect day to go because basically it was a treble, man of the match, goal scorer. What and I, yeah, I said to myself, if if I need to finish my career with Rangers to go somewhere else, this is the perfect place, the best, perfect moment to, to say thank you very much to all supporters who have really been behind me all these seasons. And uh, and of course, you know, I uh, started to cry because I, I didn't really want to go. I felt really sad that day, although we were winning in this second travel in six years is is great achievement but no great feeling they were through my mind in that moment but that's how life goes football was especially what you're gonna start playing there, all right? <laughs> especially football career and uh, i took the chance brilliant else. i just need to ask you because i ask everyone that comes on this after the you won the league yeah. did the celebrations go on too long before the done again not really. No, really. I don't know why so many people has been asking me this. Yeah. But I tell you, you know, involved. No, really. No, I was involved, but trust me, we were not definitely uh, over uh, celebrating. It was just about uh, the fact that Dundee was a good team that day. It was very warm as well, so the 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 the, 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 the weather was not really helping us. But besides that, Dundee was a good, decent team. So we're trying to not making us play well. In fact, we knew that it would have been a difficult difficult game, a difficult final, but we made up and in the end we won. I scored, so that's, uh, that's, that's the most matters. important thing. Right, last question. How would you look back on your Rangers career? Uh, very happy to have taken that decision many years ago. And uh, as I said, every time I come back in Glasgow, it's like uh, come back home again. And um, I, I know why we dick fell at you. Oh. Jealous of the hair in it. <laughs> <laughs> Lorenzo, top man, Thank thanks you very, very much. much. Thanks. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Cheers.